Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien in the Storage View Lab, and we've got something that we've been waiting on for quite a while. It's the Samsung SSD 980 Pro. Now this guy is exciting for a number of reasons, primarily because it's Samsung's first effort in the PCIe Gen 4 category, and that means it should be quick, right? Yeah, and if it's like the past Samsung models, it's usually the fastest. Yeah, so Samsung's got a history of offering just simply great SSDs, whether it's their more value end that uses QLC NAND or their mainstream PCIe Gen 3 drives, which were at the head of the pack forever, really, with exception to a couple of the Optane, small Optane SSDs. Yeah, and even some of their value drives have been outperforming the performance models of other companies. Right. And so recently, though, Samsung's been a little bit behind the curve on getting the Gen 4 drive to market in a number of the call them second tier SSD brands have come out with Gen 4 drives and and have subsequently taken over the top spots on our charts. Um, that probably ends today. Yeah. Yeah. Samsung 980. So this comes in a 250 gig, 500 gig terabyte and will be coming out in a two terabyte capacity. It's a single sided SSD, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other key specs here. Uh, like I said, those are the, the capacities up to two terabytes, which will be out later this year. Samsung's got the whole vertical integration story, which they've had for almost the entire time they've been in the SSD business, or maybe even since day one. I yeah, can't... it gives a lot, of, a lot of strength. When you're making your own controller, your own NAND, your own DRAM, you can do you can kind of pull out as much performance as possible from it. So they've got their latest generation Elpis controller, uh, Gen 6, I think, on the VNAND we're up to. Uh, all these drives have a DRAM cache. They've also got a dynamic cache. We'll get into that a little bit. And Samsung is very excited about quoting those numbers, especially the sequentials on that terabyte drive of 7,000 megabytes and 5,000 megabytes per second, which puts them on paper at least 2,000 megabytes faster than a lot of their competitors. Yeah, and a lot of these, it depends on the benchmark using async versus synchronous write. So there, there's going to be some wiggle room there, but you have to make sure you're comparing each drive in the exact same setting. Right. So that's the million IOPS that uh, that they're real excited about. We won't see that, but to Kevin's point, it's just because we test a little bit differently. Um, and then if we skip down to the bottom, five-year warranty, which is uh, nice for a client drive. And the, uh, the endurance numbers of 600 terabytes on the one terabyte drive is, uh, is pretty strong. Samsung figures that that'll accommodate 99.7% or something of the world out there in terms of endurance. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize just how much you can write to these drives before they get worn out. So if we uh, keep going through and we take a look at some of the components, now this is just a highlight of uh, both their VNAND and their controllers. Uh, pulled this out of the uh, the reviewer's guide they sent. Uh, you just just interesting progression in terms of the density on their uh, NAND layers and and uh, some of the progression in the controllers going from UBX way back in the 950 Pro days, which by the way still a pretty good drive today. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> which, which is the uh, the funny part onto Phoenix and and uh, Elpis after that with the uh, increase in in queues and and decrease in uh, in process die size. Then we've also got the a uh, little more detail on the performance. So we saw that in the, the overall spec sheet, but just zooming in here, Kevin, anything special stand out to you? I mean, the big push to a million IOPS, it's definitely pushing to the realm that you generally find from a enterprise model. Right. And now you're able to see those performance levels with a consumer level drive. So I think a lot of the people going into purchasing one of these types of uh, products, it's not just you're looking for a subtle bump in performance, you're looking for a pretty aggressive bump in performance. Yeah, and you can see also a pretty clear um, motivation to go to the 500 gig version, especially when you look at the, the right performance. Unlikely that an end user would feel the difference on the reads, but the right performance uh, sequential is a, a pretty strong reason to, to step up to that capacity. Yeah, there's always been a lot of push between which capacity you want to go for, not just from the, well, how much can I fit my stuff into, but uh, trying to make sure you're getting into the uh, more normalized performance variant of that particular model. Okay, and one other thing, we talked about the dynamic boost capability. Uh, this is a TurboWrite 2.0 that Samsung calls uh, the technology that's in the 980 Pro. And this one is just interesting in the way that if there's capacity available, it'll dynamically add 
an SLC-like cache. And on that terabyte drive, we can see the difference in going from 42 gigabytes available in the uh, 970 Evo Plus to, uh, what is that, a little bit more than double at 160, eh, almost triple at 165. What is that, a 6'4", 114 gigabytes yeah. in the 980 Pro? Uh, so again, an interesting uh, mechanism to get just a little more buffer built into the drive. And I think this is, even in the Gen 1 that we saw in the Evo Plus, is a big part of why these drives perform so well. Yeah, and, and again, this comes back to just how you're leveraging the drive, because in most scenarios, you're probably not going to be hammering the drive as much as you would uh, in an, a consumer setting versus an enterprise, but when you start looking at uh, media professionals, they're starting to do a lot of video editing on a drive. You can start to see some aggressive uh, write activity on them. And that gets into the next point on thermals. Now, this is really interesting because when you look at the drives, we've got the standard sticker on the drive here. But Kevin, you noticed when uh, not when reading the reviewer's guide, but when handling the drive, yeah, the back, the back sticker is thicker. thicker. Kind of cool, and and we'll get close on it. But there's a little metallic sticker on the underside of the uh, of the non uh, NAN pack side, the the blank side, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, two things that Samsung's talking about here. One is the nickel coating on the controller that they see on that chart on the left accounts for a uh, seven degree gap uh, just by putting nickel on the controller. I mean, from a thermal standpoint, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then the heat spreading label that, that Kevin noticed because it stands out visually once you've looked at a couple hundred of these drives, they've got a quite a stack of, of stuff squished in there. Yeah, you have to think that there's probably some variance in here depending on uh, what type of thermals the uh, device you're putting this drive into can account for because some have thermal pads to allow the drive to dissipate the energy into the motherboard. Uh, and there, you also have to factor in there, so there might be systems that have nothing at all. And we haven't seen thermals be a big impact, but we do know that especially on enterprise drives that when you pound them long enough and hard enough that they will... If they get too hot, they will throttle back. Yeah. And so when we're talking about thermals here, what Samsung's worried about is now that there's so much more performance available to these things in, in new Gen 4 compatible systems, that if they're being worked over really hard and the uh, controller gets warm, that it will eventually throttle back. So the technology, whether it's nickel or a fancy sticker or some uh, firmware optimizations to prevent that is really what Samsung's excited about here, giving you this performance for a longer period of time. Yeah, because no one wants to buy a drive and not use it. There you go. So when we take a look at performance, let's dive in there because I think that's the, um, the next big step. When we started with these charts, as we added these, uh, the Sabrent, the uh, ceramic, and the silicon power drives, which were the first three we saw with Gen 4, you kind of knew it was coming when Samsung dropped these off that the line was going to be yeah, lower, usually, lower and righter. Usually, at least when you're first to market, you can say, well, we're, it's a drive that it's the fastest drive they've tested yet. Well, yet is the key word. Right. And usually when Samsung comes into this, they just dominate the field and it's just, it's not pretty. So when you look at sequential read, we're at around 4.5 gig a second, lower latency than anything else in that range. And depending on the benchmark, you might be, be you might be seeing more. Oh, I was going to say, but wait, it gets worse or better. So, <laughs> and there, there when you, you have it. When you look at the sequential write performance, um, Samsung not only is uh, lower latency across the board, they're more than double uh, the leading competitor. Oh, at least leading competitor we've tested so far. Right, and we'll see more drives and more mature companies come out with drives, but dear goodness, this is a uh, just a, a not even a race. This is tortoise and yeah, hare kind and of thing. We saw this before with the uh, Evo Plus model where there was a very, there was a more of an economical variant that uh, just blew everyone else away on the, uh, the well, playing field. But what's different this time, though, is that Samsung's normally first out. So they get to set the line, and then everyone else compares a little bit less than Samsung. In this case, you know, they came in and uh, 
gosh, they just really slaughtered these guys. Yeah. So then we go to our uh, random we, uh, read workload, and uh, we measured under 600,000 IOPS. But again, this is a VD Bench synchronous IO workload, not async. You're going to see higher performance levels with higher QDEPs or asynchronous uh, reads and writes. But in this area, we're still seeing that benefit of lower latency and dramatically higher uh, read performance. Okay. And then again, it gets fun with the 4K random write workload. Everyone else tapers off before 150,000 IOPS, and this drive just powers on to uh, under 400,000 IOPS in, in this workload. But again, I mean, it just decimates the competitors. It's ugly. Yeah. And then lastly, as we look at uh, our SQL Server uh, workload, which this would be more of a test dev type environment for the drive. We came in at uh, three milliseconds, which is right alongside the uh, 970 Pro, a little bit faster, just if you look at the transactions per second figure. But it's not as strong in this area. But again, there's there are some differences on testing platform. All the Gen 3 workloads were tested on Intel. This guy's tested on AMD platform. So there is some variance there. Well, and then that gets back to the, the key point is the compatibility for these drives is just so limited right now. Yeah, you're going to be buying for an AMD platform. Right, today and then later this someday, Intel will get there and have Gen 4 support. But on an AMD platform with the technology that they've got now in some of those CPUs, the uh, ThinkStation 620, for instance, is got amazing performance spec and Gen 4 support. And in something like that, these drives will absolutely scream. Yeah, it'll be pretty fun. Yeah, so there's no doubt that the technology is there, that Samsung is now the clubhouse leader in terms of uh, end user PCIe Gen 4 support. Plus, they've also got the awesome application, Magician, which sometimes we forget about, but is by far the best in terms of drive management. Yeah, you know, checking your firmware version, checking what the health levels are, although most people aren't reaching those, but it is nice right. to see it without having to go to some command light utility. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the drive guys offer a solution for that, but Magician, it's, it's like I said, it's not even close. We've done up videos on five or six of these things, and, and the UI, the information provided, and uh, the ease of, uh, of drive optimization, firmware updates, all that stuff is really great. So if you've got a Gen 4 system, you're spending that kind of money, you really want storage that's going to let that system scream. This is the drive, current clubhouse leader for end user systems. Uh, no one else is, is even close. So if you want the best, this is it.